Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And see the long-term impacts of climate change. But we're glad to have you. Thank you for being with us. Looking around the globe, one of the things that we ha constantly have to think about as far as disasters are concerned, and also to be take, able to take care of our own local communities, is water. Water is life, and we're adding more and more of this little uh, addition to water plus oxygen is life uh, because what we found out in a number of our projects that if you're just putting water and not adding oxygen into things things just don't work as well as they should and there's a lot of reasons for that but the gentleman sitting right beside me has been working on water water technologies and also the wastewater treatment which is critically important to combine these two together so this is Chuck Botwick CHB LLC and also IPAC LLC and thank you for being with us again on Emerald Planet TV. Great to be with you Sam. Always glad to have you. Looking at uh, the situation with water and uh, we have uh, some word slides up here which we don't normally do but this is so people can hear you know what you're going to be talking about at the same time visually be able to see it. Why is it so important that we focus on having water and wastewater treatment as a dual project, no matter where we're doing in the middle of the desert in Africa or downtown Baltimore or Washington, D.C.? Well, in order to have good potable water and good health, uh, we need to be sure that the sources themselves aren't contaminated. The problem is, is that there's so much untreated wastewater or poorly treated wastewater in the world that the majority of the world's rivers, streams, and other sources for water, uh, for drinking water, mm -hmm. are contaminated by wastewater. Right. And we so. have to do something uh, about that. And uh, I'm going to skip over these because this is a lot of information most people can't see, but all about the various pathogens and uh, the uh, contamination that people can, can face. But let's get into the technologies because that's what we really like to emphasize here, uh, the various technologies. Looking at the system we have in front of us, you know, the, as far as water is concerned, in the past we had, you know, the potable water, uh, we had wastewater treatment. Now because of the concept of new water, taking, you know, very dirty water and turning it into drinking water, is these are dual use systems. And we're looking at one of these here. Now, how do we do that so that people don't go, yuck, not my water, but everybody's drinking recycled water right. and repurposed water. Right. So how do we do that through these units? How are they manufactured? How are they used? And how can they be made available in public spaces so that they can be used for small communities, right. even very large scale? Cities. Well, essentially what these containerized systems have accomplished, they were first developed for the military, for bases where you couldn't manage taking large volumes of water in and out either because it was dangerous or difficult. So we had to come up with a system that was modular, transportable, and could take all kinds of water, toilet water, shower water, cooking water, and treat it and recycle it and make it fully potable. Mm -hmm. Now, the key is the final polishing that allows the water to be completely clean to a potable level. And in fact, these systems have been demonstrated and fully tested to take wastewater and give high quality potable water. Yeah, in many cases, this is really pure water because the type of technology they're using 
in many cases much better than what we're getting out of most municipal systems now That's anyway correct. but looking at this putting this in the back of a truck I mean this really is modular and it's very well, we shouldn't say uh, movable but it's totable and you can get it to different places right it's easy to mobilize it's just like a truck body uh, what would be called an ISO container mm -hmm. uh, so they're really plug-and-play and, and to that end you can put them in parallel so they're very scalable it could be for uh, a small community a village uh, could be for an a large zone of a city mm -hmm. which has uh, issues with the uh, current wastewater system it allows to have an off-grid system so the ability to have uh, these deployable units gives you a lot of capability to design solutions of different sizes. Now we're looking at the innards of, of this type of system and it goes to the filtration that they have and you're taking things down to one micron which is mensical actually even keeps uh, various viruses out and looking Par parasites. at parasites mm -hmm, yeah and looking at the whole thing as far as all these different contagion you know year by year we're mm -hmm. getting more and more right. virulent and uh, more dangerous so how do we do this as far as these you know 300 plus legacy cities that we have that have these large-scale municipal uh, facilities that actually were built some of them a hundred years ago and are gradually upgrading their quality how do we leap time how do we leap technologies to bring these to really 21st century right. quality and technology well as the wastewater systems in any country uh, begin to age you sh the need is to look at taking new technology uh, in the past computers took up whole rooms mm -hmm. Now what's in our pocket is more powerful. And these systems essentially have done the same thing to make smaller the systems that can effectively clean water. Now looking at these uh, small units that we're gonna look at uh, right now, tell us about this and how does it work and, and what's the capacity and how do we add to these so we can add more and more capacity? Well, uh, initially what's very important is to filter water to one micron because that removes uh, parasites, which are a big uh, public health issue. Uh, public systems are unable to do that because of the sheer volume. So you look at breaking down into a series of, of uh, scalable systems so that you can manage the volume and you can remove parasites uh, that sometimes uh, people mistake for fever. Mm -hmm. uh, you are able to get rid of hazardous chemicals, uh, metals, pesticides, all these contaminants of modern society by special uh, filtration systems that were developed. And then finally, you use ultraviolet mm -hmm. light uh, instead of chlorine uh, to take care of viruses and bacteria. Uh, you do all those things together and you have perfectly safe water. Mm -hmm. Now, in looking at perfectly safe water, uh, many people call this actually pure water. Uh, is it pure as it comes through that and mm -hmm. you're doing all this filtering down to one micron? Well, is you that have, where it should be? Well, there's a difference between, <coughs> the, the proper term would be, are you talking about purely distilled water, which mm -hmm. have, has all minerals removed and everything else. Uh, uh, this water doesn't have all the minerals removed. It, it has a good taste to it. It's removing what needs to be taken out mm -hmm. that can make you sick. Right. Okay. Uh, and also by not using chlorine, by using ultraviolet light, uh, you're not creating chlorinated hydrocarbons, which are a known carcinogen. Not gonna give you cancer today or tomorrow, but if you drink that water over decades, it has a, the capacity to cause cancer. So the World Health Organization has said, let's get away from chlorine, ultraviolet is better. You can use chlorine in distribution systems, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, for the actual disinfection, ultraviolet is great. Now looking at this uh, special cart here as far as water filtration is concerned, uh, this is really in miniature what a very large system would be able to do. On this cart, do we have everything that we need that would make the water as clean as we need it to have down to the one micron? Yes. And to allow yeah. people to feel very secure in the water they're drinking, you know, like uh, DC Water says, do the tap. Mm -hmm. 
Well, these systems are all designed, uh, they're scalable, so every unit, whether it's uh, what we would call a village unit, mm -hmm. uh, small, small volume unit, all the way up to uh, millions of gallons a day, it, it's the same principle to clean the water. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at these uh, containerized units, this is something that we set up in military uh, zones, uh, disaster recovery and all that. So what do we have here that actually allows people to have confidence? Yes, we just had a major hurricane or a tornado or you know, flash fire, destroyed our infrastructure, mm -hmm. but we know our water is safe. Well, it's a good question, and uh, it's a challenge in many cases where water and wastewater infrastructure is damaged. Uh, in, an, in a disaster. Uh, what these containerized systems allow to be done is to mobilize them and place them uh, to supplant other infrastructure that was destroyed without having to wait a long time to rebuild it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we've run out of time, as always the case when we're together on Emerald Planet TV, but I'm gonna leave this up as far as this uh, inline containerized system we have here. What do you see over the next five, 10, or 15 years of even in large scale cities like a New York or a Chicago or a Los Angeles where the, the infrastructure is being strained, it's aging and all that, where do we need to be going, Chuck, in your estimation for well, the future? Well, there's no question that in the future, now and in the future, we recycling wastewater. We cannot afford to waste water mm -hmm. and not treat it. Mm -hmm. So the treated wastewater to potable, high-quality water is the future for the planet. Yeah, that's fantastic. New Thank you. This is Chuck Botwick, the uh, CHB LLC, IPAC LLC. Thank you for being with us, and thank you for being with us on the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you.